So that's a little introduction to Seth and his world and his art. And now we're going to do a PowerPoint. This is the first one. This, huh? is, the this first is the first one. one. Okay. And um, what I want to say is that Seth was evaluated when he was 18. He had a three-day formal vocational evaluation recommending a career in dry mopping. I said, I will die first. He will play Nintendo his entire life. We're not doing dry mopping. He took his first <laughs> art class at 20 and was on the Today Show as an artist at 23. I said, do you ever bring anyone back? They said, no, and then they called and said, could he, they redo him for New Year's Day for his most their most inspirational story of the year. And uh, Seth is an icon of hope. I wrote my book, An Unexpected Journey, An Unexpected Life, An Unexpected Life. life. <laughs> I wrote my book no, video is an after, I was, after I was 60 and I never wrote anything in my life. So the message that Seth brings into the world is you have no idea what you're going to do. You have no idea what your gifts are. You have no idea what you're going to achieve. And no matter what age you are, there's a possibility that everything ahead of you is more exciting than anything behind you. And that would be true for every single one of you in this room, and for me, and, and for Seth. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the um, some of these images. These are images of Seth's art in different galleries. Now in the back there are two of his horses with their wonderful little chicken legs. <laughs> I just love those horses. But uh, the big paintings are too large to carry around, but they've been photographed, and I want you to see them in some of the um, islands. So this is Seth in Galapagos. We went to Galapagos. We spoke to the owner of a gallery. We were back for four days, and we got an email asking if Seth would have an opening there. And we went back to the Majeski Gallery in Galapagos, and Seth had an opening there. Seth did images simply from our first trip. And this was a sea lion, but it has, I know those eyes. They were the eyes from our golden retriever. <laughs> This is uh, Seth's groupers. Seth has done many fantasy figures, like the two horses, and this was among the most realistic of his paintings. This is the whale shark. Um, you know, there are all these intellectual property issues. So Seth did a painting of a blue-footed booby based on a photograph, and then I wrote to the guy, and I said, you know, I wasn't thinking he did this painting, can we exhibit it, because it's from your photo. And he said, oh yes, and I'll send you more photos that I want Seth to paint. So he sends us those wh this whale shark, and it's not in there, but the whale shark is 40 feet long, and there's a teeny little picture of a diver you know, like a half an inch, and Jonathan says to him that he was diving with this whale shark. And Seth writes back, Jonathan will not dive with whale shark, no biting the body parts. <laughs> <laughs> this is Seth with some of his turtles, and Seth loves wearing his t-shirts. This is his hippocampus from the Museum of Natural History. That's how he communicates with the world. Another sea lion, same eyes, tortoises. Then we were invited to Cayman, and he had a huge opening there. They were a nonprofit, and they um, did everything they could to educate the entire island. The muse his work filled the museum like four rooms of his art. 
This was one of the first paintings Seth ever did. It maybe was the fourth painting, like um, Athena who sprang from Zeus's head, full grown in battle, armor ready to fight. That's how Seth was. From the first time he painted, he was ready to paint. He never was a beginner. This is Seth's first self-study, and it's the cover of our book. Seth did a lot of triptychs of Northern Lights. Here are the blue-footed boobies. Big fish. Octopi. This, this one has like human eyes. It's just incredible eyes. And what Seth did was he stood up and he splattered paint over the entire canvas. And then he drew the octopus and left the splattered paint in the center. And then he put in the ocean to cover most of the paint. And then these tentacles have little pink discs. And at that point, Seth was painting about eight hours a day, and it took him one day to do two tentacles, just the teeny little pink discs. He's very, very determined to get exactly what he wants. He doesn't care how long he has to work. And then he put in those sleepy little eyes. <laughs> this was an eagle ray, and um, now we spend a lot of the winter in Cayman, and Seth has seen a lot of eagle rays now. Again, the detail and the time, he just, I could never do it. I love the eagle ray uh, painting that you show on your Facebook page. Uh huh. That is just my favorite. Oh, I, I would love to see that in person. Yeah. The, um, I don't know what it was or how it was drawn or like what was used. Was it drawing or painting? It looked like it looked like a marker, like almost like magic markers, or it could have been painting. I couldn't tell. I would love to see the horse on that. The first time we took Seth, we took Seth out of the country for the first time in '07 to Costa Rica. He started painting these birds. This is the crew of the staff and I uh, came and who loved him. He was in magazines there. What is that painting? This is one of the um, blowing in the wind paintings. Seth has painted about five paintings for Bob Dylan, who does not care. And about five for Elton John, who also <laughs> does not care. But if they ever want to come pick them up, they are there. So this is one of the blowing in the winds. It was so interesting because he started with these, I, I just, I didn't know what it was. It was organic, but I couldn't figure out what it was. And then when I asked what it was, he said, the grass is winding. So then I realized, oh, it's grass in the wind. The grass is winding, and there it is, winding. That was another article about him. Then we were invited to Curacao. It was Seth in his turtle shirt from Cleveland Museum of Natural History, one of his early whales. And that was our, his second service dog, Golden Retriever. And when people leave, they go to Venus. So Finn is now on Venus along with Elvis and the painting is called Finn on Venus. There is a blowing in the wind, and this is a horse moving, so the hoof is going through several, you know, like an animated film. That love is abstract. This one turned into a Christmas tree and a roller coaster. <laughs> the paint is so thick, it's like hard-boiled eggs. It just sticks out that much from the paint from the canvas. 
sat with his dolphins. Now this painting is interesting. It's about this big and it took 250 hours because I counted. <laughs> he made every single scale individually. So there's a painting that's like six feet, that's seven feet of Northern Lights that he did in 11 hours. Uh, Seth will do nothing. He doesn't care about money. He doesn't care about time. He does what he wants to do. So if he wants to do a huge painting in 11 hours, if he wants to do a modest painting in 250 hours and get every single scale exactly the color he wants it, he will do that. Now we have a new series of, they're not, we don't have them here, but um, you can find them on his website where we were in Cayman with Molly who was helping us and Seth went to feed the iguanas bananas and Seth who's been fighting to get the food at the table there started fighting with the iguana for who would get the banana. <laughs> the guy peek over and he'd be eating the banana and I'd say, are those for the iguanas? And he said, Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so there are, there's a there's a drawing of an iguana with a banana. It's like Andy Warhol drawing. Yeah. We should add that. This is the Curacao waterfront. It's a very long painting. This is was for Elton John, who has not come to pick it up yet. It is a rocket man. And Seth is very sensitive about Pluto, having been taken out of the uh, status of planet. So he was very, he put Pluto in anyhow. And this is either a pot roast or Seth has on his own discovered string theory. Deborah? Yes. Does Seth start out um, with a concept and then do you acquire the canvas size that he needs, or does he simply react to a canvas size and work spontaneously? I don't think Seth has ever responded to a canvas size. I In think other he, words, he decides what he wants to paint, and yes. the canvas size yeah, is, uh, right. you, you get the canvas that he needs. Right. Sometimes Seth will paint for a specific show, like for Galapagos and Cayman, they wanted images of their countries. Mm -hmm. So everything was determined by that. Seth always paints with a mentor, okay. and that's the autism. I think the canvas is like a membrane between him and the other person. And he paints to watch you react to what he's doing. And you have to know what he's doing. So Seth will not paint if the other person is ignorant. Like he will, if I'm there, he has no interest in painting for me. I don't know enough. So he communicates. With it's how he communicates. It's almost like a heartbeat. But he wants the other person to be smart enough to get it. So I took him. Uh, he took a silk screening class at CMA. He was the only one there who was in any way special needs. And his mentor took him, but one day she couldn't come and I went. So he was doing a horse and he made the horse purple with a green mane. And everyone was coming around and saying, oh my God, Seth, oh my God, oh look at this. And he just vibrates with, it's like oxygen to him. But if you're, not smart visually, then he, he would not be the right painting partner for him. He wants, they're, all his people are either Cleveland Institute of Art, students, graduates, or faculty. And he gets so excited when he can excite them. So sometimes he's painting, he's always painting to communicate. He okay. also is painting to heal. He believes that his paintings will heal the world. And okay, so the communication has to involve another person. The communication yes. communication isn't necessarily between the artist and the canvas. No, he's interested in his art going into hospitals, mm -hmm. his art being on the cover of books. He has been on the cover of, I think, four or five books already and is scheduled to be on a neurology text.
it, it's very important for him to, and he also likes signing books. If you want to buy a book at the end, Molly will deal with that. And Seth loves to sign. It's very important to him that he sign and that you have the signed book. Okay, we're all. Yeah, we have a table right out there that we'll be sitting at after the presentation. This was a very realistic hawk. That's a phoenix. Seth does cutouts also. Then we didn't go, but three of his paintings went to Kiev. It's the only time we hit the word museum. It was the Museum of Modern Art of the Ukraine in Kiev, and three of his paintings went. And those are two of the self-studies. They went unframed and unstretched and just hammered them into the wall. They were very, very popular. And you can see how large they are. This is Seth's opus, Manhattan Floating in the East River. It is 11 feet by 26 feet. It is 104 small paintings, small being like this. It almost killed the mother, I will tell you that <laughs> without any doubt. The uh, engineering, Seth has a mentor, Kip, in Brooklyn, who will match whatever Seth wants to do. So the engineering on this was unbelievable, just unbelievable. This is a curved wall that it's on. Now it's in a hospital in the Hudson Valley. The um, turtle is the same size as the financial district. He has mythic creatures in the East River. He has, this is Manhattan mm -hmm. as he thinks with city planning it would be helped to have roller coasters and Ferris wheels. Close up. That's Seymour Quast, who's a popular artist and a distant relative of ours. It's a big painting. <laughs> These are cutouts that hang in front of it. This is us at Natural History. I think it was Seth's second opening. This was his second biggest painting. This is a mural for mythic creatures and the museum built a wall to display it. This one's in our third floor now. That's just to show you the size of the mural. These are Seth Smith, the creatures. This is the one that's on his t-shirt right now. So he's, what's that? He's, Seth, what is that? Hippocampus t-shirt. And what is that? It's your book cover number two. Okay. <laughs> what's that? Fancy Pegasus is number one. Thank you. Fancy? What's yeah, fancy? Pegasus is number two. Oh, fancy. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fancy Pegasus number three. Okay. The boys run on Fancy Pegasus. Okay. Two Fancy Griffins. On a... Valentine's Day sky. On a Valentine's Day sky. <laughs> That's sweet. <laughs> Who's that? Fancy Griffin Sculpture. Okay. The United Nations Exhibition. So then Seth won an award. Uh, there was a worldwide competition and Seth came in number one and it was the seventh panel from the Mythic Creature mural became a postal stamp, a United Nations postal stamp. And they, first there was a place where we won an award, there's the award. 
United uh, Nations uh, Autism Awareness Competition. And when we were invited for this, I wish I had a way to record it on my answering machine. I said, when is the program? And she said, the Secretary General has not given us his calendar yet. <laughs> and when they spoke, everyone was Your Excellency. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. The front row was all excellencies. Gandhi's uh, grandmother was there. No, granddaughter was there. And that's the stamp that won the award. There we are with the rights. That is Gordon Clapp, an actor. I don't know if any of you were NYPD blues fans, but he was my favorite detective who was in love with the ditzy blonde. And he formed a relationship with Seth and corresponds with him and sent us tickets to his opening in New York. And he just loves Seth. Seth loves him. Then the plain dealer sent fashion people to our house to be photographed with different paintings. <laughs> and then these are just some photographs of Seth's works. This is another of the chicken leg variety. Seth is very, very prolific. These are very big paintings. A lot of them are like four by five or six by seven, five by six. That's the one that's on his shirt. He has a green eye. He does sculptures. He loves roller coasters. Seth wants to go to Venice, and he thinks if he paints enough of it, I'll take him there. And he's probably right. <laughs> so this is Seth pimping for Venice. Keep trying. Trinidad. I can't of Trinidad. This was a show for Trinidad that got canceled where they wanted only paper, so it's oil on paper, which is a very oh. unusual combination. What kind of paper did you use? Oh, I, I whatever. Abstract. The magic What kind of paper, Seth? Do you know what kind of paper was, was on like the Trinidad? Probably like, color you know, probably the, BFK or something. Because the oil paint was just like, you yeah. know. It, it, the, I, whatever the thickest paper, paper was, they could get. Yeah. <laughs> This is the hard-boiled egg kind of <laughs> abstract watercolors. Dutch master. This is half Rembrandt, half Peter Max in the Yellow Submarine. Sea turtle. What is it? Self-study. Okay. Hippocampus, dark blue, dark ocean through fancy hippocampus walking through the quarry with bobbles. Right. Seth has a lot of architectural drawings. He loves architecture, and those are his imaginary clouds. This is one of the books where he was did the cover art. That was the second book where he did the cover art. The next one where he did the cover art. And that's our book with the cover art. <laughs> <laughs> this was the poster he did for Chamber Fest, the Cleveland Orchestra, the Cleveland Festival for Chamber Music, and he did the drawing for that. This is Seth at the Chef's Gala 
with Michael Simon and Miss New York. So Seth met Miss New York. They, the woman who runs it calls them the girls. So the girls have platforms, and if their platform includes autism, then they link that girl up with Seth. So every time Seth goes to New York, they send the girls who want to be photographed with an autistic person, and it makes Seth very happy. Yes, there he is in this New York. That is the man who owns Toys R Us. The Miss New Yorks travel with a publicist, and you can only speak to the publicist and a bodyguard so you don't touch them. They can touch you, but you can't touch them. And that's Michael Simon, who's been very kind to Seth. Okay, so um, we have not updated our slideshow in about a year and a half, but we're, you know, we're overwhelmed with every in every single way. So I could tell you about the books we're currently doing, or you could ask questions. I'll, I'll do whatever you like. How do you answer Jada's set? I said, uh, page. Well, at the time of Galapagos, he was painting about <coughs> 55 hours a week. And then that was too much for him, and he sort of burned out. And now he's painting pretty much 10.30 to 1 and 2 or 2.30 to 5. But he does that uh, five days a week, and then he sometimes paints on Sunday. He, li he loves to paint. And this is in your house? He paints in your house? Yes. Or? At one point, we had about four studios in the house. <laughs> He's taken over the entire house. Yes. So is he always happy when he's painting? I mean, do you see other emotions like frustration or sadness? No, or? no, no, no. You saw in the movie where he's jumping and he does high he kicks and he giggles. Hums. He's he hums a lot. Yeah, when he's hum, he hums. He's he only is happy when he paints. Where does the subject matter come from? Well, part of it is if he's invited to do a show. And part of it is he loves being in books. So right now, there are quite a few books being written either by us or by people about Seth. So if you told him you wanted him to do a show and you invited him to do whatever the topic was, he would just be so excited and he would do your topic until that show, no matter what the topic was. Or if you, you told these are all self-generated images? Well, the fantasy, there are two different categories. And this has been an ongoing struggle for us. All the horses with the little chicken legs, all the horses, period, all the mythological tree creatures, of course, are pure fantasy. Seth has had mentors. So one of his mentors said, well, I want Seth to learn to paint realistically. And look at all those horses. They're all the same, 25 identical horses. And he's never grown. I want him to grow. I want him to paint in volume. So he tried to teach Seth, and I watched. And in 14 hours, he did something called the waved albatross. It was two plump, fat birds. And I would have sworn Seth could not do that. But I watched for 14 hours, and Seth did every single stroke. Now, Donna, the first mentor who was in the film, was in a rage. She said Seth was born able to copy. You don't want Seth to copy. You don't want him to do anything realistic. Never let him look at anything. Just let him go in his head. And then the other mentor said, he's been doing that. He needs to grow. He needs to change. He needs to learn volume. He needs to learn. So Kip, my uh, New York mentor, said, it's art school. Let them do whatever they want to do. Seth, in the end, will do whatever he wants to do. Don't worry about it. So there are paintings, like the whale shark, that are from a photograph, where Seth is trying 
to do what Jonathan Green sent him. But we're doing less and less of those. Um, the person who wanted him to learn to do that has left. <laughs> and there's no one else who's pushing that agenda that Seth should learn to do that. Yes? Are the self-studies um, done from direct observation or from um, what he knows about his peers? No, I think they set up a bunch of mirrors. Yeah. Yes. Does he go to a school, or is, are these teachers in the house? They're, everyone's in the house. Everyone comes to him. Everyone comes to the house. Um, at the beginning, he went to Monarch, and for maybe a year, his final year there, he painted. They had a cafeteria they weren't using that they turned into a studio for him. And I brought a different mentor there every day. So every day for two and a half hours, he would paint down there. And one per with one mentor, he did only blue whales. With another mentor, he did only hands. With another mentor, he did only the night sky. He picked the topic for each mentor. And he did all his painting down there. But then there was a very complicated painting. One of the women was sitting in front of it for fashion. And a kid put their finger through an oil painting that had all been done with a tiny brush. And it took about eight hours to fix it. And we moved out of that studio that day. So now he paints only in our house where nobody will put their fingers through the paintings. <laughs> yes? Yeah, you mentioned uh, Rembrandt in the slideshow. Are there other famous artists no, that was, again, it was an idea of Kip. Kip said he wanted Seth to paint the least Seth-like painting he could think of. So, Seth, so Kip gets an email every day from some museum in Amsterdam. And it wasn't by Rembrandt, but it was someone from that school. So he prints it out, this little, you know, color photograph of this Dutch master. And they took a piece of paper about this big, and he told Seth to make that as into a drawing. And this is where OCD wins. So, you know, it was just unbelievable, unbelievable. I watched it for months. Every dress, every animal, every gate is different, and it's all by little hatch marks. So that was. Um, an influence. I'll just tell you one more thing about it. Seth has a picture I call Starry Night. So I said to him, Seth, are you like Van Gogh? He said, no, no mustache. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to know how he began that painting, the Dutch. Did he begin in the middle? Did he plan in all these spaces? Did he start at one side or one corner and work across? I don't remember. I am under the impression that Seth sees the entire painting before he starts. He never just starts anything the same way. He's, it's always changes. It's always different? It's always different. Yeah. I think it's in, his, yeah, go ahead. Does he work at only one piece at a time? No. Seth works with different mentors. And with each mentor, he's working on a specific painting. And nobody else works on that painting. So right now, Seth and Molly are doing something that he calls the salmon filet abstract. <laughs> There's a, and I'll come back to that. So every time he's with Molly, that's what he'll be working on until he finishes that. And Noah is a sculpting student. Well, he graduated from CIA. They started together when they were both 23. Now they're both 30. And we were invited to Fargo. And she said, will you come to North Dakota? I thought, North Dakota? She said, Fargo, it's my favorite movie. So I said, yeah, of course we'll come to Fargo. So they want us to come to Fargo to see this white buffalo 
And apparently it's an albino buffalo and it's a real big deal, like it's really a sacred animal. So Seth has been doing white buffalo with Noah. He's on his second white buffalo. Kip is absolutely insane. Kip will, oh, is always pressing the envelope, always. So he comes to us several times a year. We go to New York more often. Kip comes and he says, we're going to build these wooden canvases. And then they're going to go out in the garden and spray paint. And Seth will either do paintings of flowers or he will do abstracts. Then they're going to cover it with this goo, I think it's called aristocrat, and then they blowtorch it. <laughs> and the blowtorch, it gives it um, like it looks like glass. And it was so exciting. Seth was just beside himself. And in, um, I don't know, they did something like 10 paintings in a week. And Seth just couldn't wait that for the last day when they were going to do the blowtorch. And um, I couldn't believe it because Kip let him hold the blowtorch. I never expected that. But Seth did the blowtorch, <laughs> and the paintings look like glass, and they're very, very different. Mm -hmm. And then Seth mm -hmm. went to New York, mm -hmm. and they mm -hmm. took it up a notch by having him use an airbrush. Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. Airbrush. And he said that Seth was on fire that he did 11 paintings in five days. He was just on fire. He was so excited. And we'll go back in October, and then they'll, Seth will um, make sure every painting's finished, sign it, and then they'll aristocrat it and blowtorch it. And he's just beside himself. He's so excited. So whatever mentor, whether the project, oh, then the salmon filet. We met a marine biologist in Cayman who became very interested in Seth. And he became more and more and more interested in Seth and Seth's art. So he is using the software to analyze a coral reef to analyze Seth's art. And he's not saying, what does it look like? He's saying, if there's stars, how far apart is each star from every other star? And if there are, because many of Seth's art, you know, many of the paintings have patterns, like bricks in the Central Park horses, bricks in the wall. Where is the shading? And what is the hue? And he's using software for all of it. He's not interested in what you think he's actually going, going over it scientifically, and then he's putting each painting in quadrants, thinking that the left side of the painting will tell you about the right side of the brain. And he's going to find out about Seth's brain and how his brain works by analyzing the painting. So he started with the tiny fantasy wa walking horses. Seth always told me there were more than 100. It's a painting about this big with teeny little horses. You can see it in the book. And Seth told me more than 100. One day I started counting, and at 780, I gave up. So Greg started using the software on this painting. So he pulled out all the blue horses. There are four colors. He Skyped me last night for an hour. He was beside himself. He said that the blue horses are 99.9% .9 random, which is impossible. He said, you cannot do random. No one can do random. It's impossible. But Seth did random. And then when he connected the lines, it made a pattern. So he thinks that's, and he's, he's very, very bright. And I can follow half of what he, 90% well, of what he said. But apparently in nature, there's some principle where things that look chaotic really have an underlying pattern. And he said that Seth is that. Like, the way the Buddha is love, that's what Seth is. He, can, he sees the patterns in chaos. And now Greg is analyzing the paintings to show that. So he sent us the tiny walking horses. And then he pulled out the blue. And then he put the lines between the blue, and it looks like a salmon fillet. 
And Seth saw it, and he said that's what he was going to paint with Molly. So the next drawing is like the salmon fillet, but it got more and more and more obsessive. And Greg says that Seth's art is like Aztec art. It's like uh, the art in Crete with those little, you know, things, the borders. He said it's like the Plains Indians. He said no one could do that. He said, we're so influenced by society, you'd have to find someone who was an artist and a Zen master and was totally able to be devoid of all that, but Seth just does it naturally. He said that Seth does this without psychotropic drugs. <laughs> it's just <laughs> unbelievable. So he's gonna do this book. What's the name of Greg's book? A Portal into the Mind of Seth Quast. A Portal into the Mind of Seth Quast. And he's flying into Cleveland to start working on this book, and then we'll all go to Cayman together for him to continue working on the book. So with Molly, all Seth is doing is these line drawings and with about five different paint. It's, let me just, where are we in time? I bet we're out of time. So Seth does not, so Seth has a project with each mentor. The projects are either self-generated, like Seth decided he was going to do salmon lines, or they're generated by the show where Seth now wants to do, what's the name of the white buffalo? Albino buffalo. White cloud. What's his, white, cl white cloud. He's now doing portraits of white cloud and the salmon and things that have to be blowtorch that are on wood because they'd be too heavy if they were on canvas and you could blowtorch canvas. So he has these three projects going, equally exciting to him and uh, equally new. So he's very happy with them. Does he want to say anything? Hmm? Does Seth want to say anything? Do you want to say anything, Seth? Yes. What do you want to say? Say. Psalm book. Okay, Psalm book. And King Seth Dreams book. King Seth's Dreams book. We're doing a book called King Seth Dreams. I have a friend who's in, very intuitive, and she believes that at night Seth goes someplace where he can talk and has friends, and he sees these mythic creatures that this is his reality at night, and then when he wakes up, the myth of creatures that you saw are simply what he lives at night. Science book. Yes, and then we're doing a science book. So we're doing a book called King Seth Dreams about how Seth at night goes up <sighs> and sees all his myth of creatures, and then during the day he has to thump down and brush his teeth and it's not so interesting, but at night he can go up. So he wants you to know about that book and the science book, The Portal into the Mind of Seth Quast is a science book. And then we're doing a psalm book where Seth can paint, like he did three abstracts to the Bach cello suites. So we just said Yo-Yo Ma over and over and over again, and Seth did three abstracts. So I've done some psalms, and we put them on tape, and Seth listens to them over and over again while he does abstracts, and we're going to do a book with the psalm on one side and the abstract on the other side, and that's what we were working on today. So Seth, what he wanted to say is that he's got three books that he's very excited about. Do you want to say anything else? Okay? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you so much for listening and coming. And um, we'll be in the other room if anybody wants Seth to sign a book. And thank you so much. Okay? okay. <laughs>